Here is a simple breakdown of what proteins, fats, and carbohydrates do within the body so that you can understand what each one respectively does so that you can start getting an amazing shape. We talk about this with fasting, we talk about it with all kinds of things, but we never talk about it just in general. I'm Thomas DeLauer, the lead trainer and lead nutritionist on sixpackabs.com. I'm also the creator of the science-based six-pack intermittent fasting program, which is the world's leading fasting program. So if you haven't already, make sure you check that out in the description down below. I'm sure you've seen my videos before, so you know I'm the real deal. All right, let's get down to the science on this. First thing I wanna talk about is carbohydrate metabolism. I'm not gonna go crazy in depth. The purpose of this video is to give you an overarching understanding of the various macronutrients so that you have more of an understanding of what each caloric response of each respective macronutrient is doing in your body. I'll make some more sense of that in just a second. So let's start with carbohydrates. You see, carbohydrates contain four calories per gram. But when we look at it, we have to realize like, why does it contain four calories? What do those calories do? Well, we have to look at the various things that carbs do. And at the end of the day, it's carbs' job to ultimately give us energy. Not a whole lot of other processes. It all stems from the energy. And carbohydrates are made up of different sugar molecules. Okay? We've got these things called monosaccharides, which are individual sugar molecules. And then we have these things called disaccharides, which are two molecules that come together. Then we have these things called oligosaccharides. Okay? Oligosaccharides are multiple sugar molecules led together in what is called a complex carbohydrate. So if you've ever heard someone talk about a simple carbohydrate, it means that it's either a monosaccharide or a disaccharide or a very small oligosaccharide. Okay, a complex carbohydrate has more glucose molecules, more sugar molecules bound together. That's as simple as it is. Okay? Then of course we have fructose, which you're gonna save for a different video. Fructose is the monosaccharide or sugar that comes from fruit. It's metabolized totally differently, so we're gonna talk about that in a different video. So glucose or sugar is the predominant fuel source within your body. Even when you are in ketosis or even when you're fasting, your body is still finding a way to utilize glucose because it's the predominant fuel source. It doesn't mean that it's the best or it doesn't even necessarily mean it's the preferential one. It just means it's the predominant. It's what our bodies are accustomed to utilizing. And our bodies take these sugars, they take these carbohydrates, and through a series of different cofactors and enzymatic processes in the body, they convert them down to carbon dioxide, to water, and then ultimately what is called ATP, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, adenosine triphosphate is simply put energy at its root. That's all it is. So carbohydrates have a clear cut path to creating ATP. That's all we really need to know when it comes down to how our bodies create energy. Glucose is the simplest process for that. When you consume carbohydrates, you're creating direct energy. Now, if you consume too much in the way of carbohydrates at one sitting, whereas you consume more than what is needed for the current energy expenditure, your body's gonna take that glucose, it's gonna store it in your muscles, and it's gonna store it in your liver. But then, when you run out of storage there, that's when your body stores carbohydrates as fat. Okay? That's what we need to talk about. That's de novo lipogenesis, where your body is actually taking carbohydrates and converting them into fat. So that's why carbs are bad to some people. Okay? So that's enough about carbohydrates. Let's talk about protein for a second. Because protein is often misconstrued as something that only helps you build muscle or only helps keep your bones and your soft tissue strong. Wow, that couldn't be further from the truth because quite honestly, that is a small fraction of what protein does in the body. Protein has a much bigger role. It doesn't matter whether you're getting it from plant-based sources, whether you're getting it from meat, whether you're getting it from dairy. Protein is still ultimately going to be protein in the sense that it's a series of amino acids that are compiled into complete proteins. Amino acids are these nitrogen-filled molecules that compile a protein. And our body sort of has a different formula for each and everything that it does in the body. For example, we need protein to make enzymes. Okay? Enzymes are the same things that actually break down carbohydrates. So it's kind of funny, they all work together. We need carbohydrates to produce the energy to actually extract amino acids from the protein, but we need the protein to actually make the enzymes that break down carbohydrates. So it's kind of a which came first, the chicken or the egg kind of thing. The fact is, they both coincide together. And if you're not getting complete proteins, meaning you're not getting the amino acids that you need, you're going to be left with some missing pieces to the jigsaw puzzle. So if you need all the pieces, all the amino acids to have a full jigsaw puzzle, to make your enzymes, to make your hormones and everything like that, then that's perfect, you've got everything. But if you're missing some of the proteins, some of the amino acids because you're eating low quality proteins, then you're left with an incomplete jigsaw puzzle where you're missing enzymes, you're missing hormones, you're missing things that are critical to a healthy, active lifestyle. Okay, then that leads us into hormones, okay? Proteins play a big role in hormone production. 
Insulin, glucagon, these are all hormones. I talk about insulin constantly. I'm always talking about how insulin is so important when it comes down to fat loss. We have to understand it. Well, without protein, we don't have the amino acids, or some of those that we extract, to ever make insulin. You see, insulin is a certain chain of amino acids, whereas your muscle is a complete chain of amino acids. You get where I'm going with this? Okay. Then we also have antibodies, the immune system. They are white blood cells. They're made up of proteins, they're structures. Anything that has structure has a protein. But now let's talk about something that's a little bit more cosmetic, something that might be kind of interesting to you. All right, have you ever noticed that after a higher protein meal, you feel a little bit leaner? Sometimes you might feel bloated, but you feel like you're holding less water. Okay, I'm not saying that you go out and eat a bunch of high protein meals all the time, but I just wanna explain the theory behind this. You see, protein acts as somewhat of a diuretic and it helps maintain fluid balance within the body. So it does this on the surface that we notice, but it also does it at the cellular level too, which is really cool. You see, at our cellular level, we have these different waters that are moving around. We have what is called intracellular water, water inside the cell. We have intravascular water, water inside the blood. And then we have interstitial water. Okay, this is water that is in between the cells, in between their membranes, so that the cells can kind of float around and communicate with each other. That's all great, the water kind of moves freely. But the proteins are too big to move along with that water. They don't fit through the cell membranes. So what happens is since proteins attract water, wherever the protein is, the water's gonna gravitate to. And because of that water gravitating towards the protein, it's keeping a constant balance. Otherwise, that water would be floating around willy-nilly, bringing minerals all different places that it shouldn't really go. It would kind of be like putting a jug of water in the back of a truck and then driving down the road and the water just sloshing back and forth versus having it go from one container neatly to another container. So that's really what we're looking at when it comes down to water balance and how important protein is. The same reason protein can make you feel a little bit drier or a little bit leaner sometimes. Okay, now let's move into fats. See, fats in the same kind of vein as carbohydrates can be used as an energy source, but they also do a multitude of other things. And the thing is, just like carbohydrates, they're defined by how long their chain is. Whereas carbohydrates are defined by a monosaccharide, disaccharide, oligosaccharide, fats are defined by how many carbon chains they have. Okay, you have lesser carbon chains, shorter fatty acids, medium, which are gonna be medium chain triglycerides, and long chain fatty acids, which are longer series of carbon chains. And the other way that they differentiate is how much of a saturation level they have how many saturation bonds they have, how many hydrogen bonds that create a saturated fat. So if you've heard of a saturated fat versus a polyunsaturated or a monounsaturated, all that simply means is, does this fat have more saturated hydrogen bonds? I know that's complex, but basically that's how we differentiate fats. Do they have more hydrogen injected into the process to make them solid at room temperature? That's all we're talking about here. But fats don't just create energy. That's one of the amazing things they do, but they also yield a lot of powerful results when it comes down to digestion. Without fats, we wouldn't create bile. And bile may seem like something that is necessary just to break down fats. But again, it's a which came first, the chicken or the egg kind of situation, because without bile, we cannot extract the fat-soluble vitamins from fat that are critical to hormone function. So we're talking vitamin A, vitamin K, things like that that are so critical when it comes down to just everyday life and everyday mineral absorption and utilization. So without bile, we don't absorb those, but without fat, we don't create bile. So it's critical when it comes down to digestion. Then we have an oxidative stress component. Constantly, our bodies are being bombarded with stress. Okay, whether it's from weight training, whether it's from running, or whether it's just from stress or lack of sleep, we are constantly bombarded with a level of oxidative stress that is totally natural and unavoidable. But fats create something in the body that are called eicosanoids. And if you've ever looked at a bottle of fish oil before, you've seen that it says EPA on the back, eicosapentaenoic acid. Well, in the same kind of trajectory, that is a component of eicosanoid, which is created within your body. An eicosanoid creates the kinds of things that go out and fight free radicals. So basically, without these eicosanoids, without fat that contributes to the building of eicosanoids, we would have a rampant influx of inflammation within the body. So fats are kind of the fire hose that puts out the fire of inflammation throughout the course of the body. That's why ketosis and fasting are so powerful, because when you're fasting, your body is utilizing its stored body fat to put out those inflammation fires. So not only are you burning fat, but you're putting out the fire throughout your body. 
So I hope this gives you a different perspective on the macronutrients. Helps you understand that carbs, proteins, and fats aren't always just these superficial things that we look at as just a calories in, calories out. They do a number of things in your body, and they're all important. We just have to make sure we know how we are getting them. So as always, make sure you're keeping it locked in here. And if you haven't already, make sure you check out the link below to check out the Science Based Six Pack Program. Look forward to seeing you in the next video, and let me know what you want to see next in the comments below. See you soon.